Mildred flees Sir William's throat, tis Harold she would rather wed. She seeks the aid of Briar Tuck and vows a safely said. <laughs> They look a couple of nasty customers. Let's keep out of trouble. Two ales, please, Joe. We're dry. It's a hot day for hunting. And uh, would your uncle like some Benedict? Shh. Or is that? I saw him. <laughs> we might make a trade with him. If he's got a barrel of good wine. I'm told it's a most popular dish with the protectors of the royal deer. <laughs> I'll ask him about it. I have a message for you. Yeah? For your friend. What is it? It's a written message. Written message. It must be important. It is. This parchment's made from a newborn calf. We'll be back. Where did you get this? Joan at the Blue Ball gave it to us. It's from the friar who keeps at Eldridge Shrine. He wants me to go there and see him. Why, he fails to say. It sounds like a trap. Yes, without any bait. Why should I journey all that way, just at his fancy? St. Eldridge Shrine? Is the man's name Tuck? Yes, it is. Do you know of him? They say he's a stalwart fellow with a sword. What, a friar and a swordsman? That's an interesting combination. I have heard that six armed knaves said on him once, and he said the lot scurrying. A most remarkable cleric. <laughs> he could still be on the side of the Sheriff of Nottingham and the Norman nobles. Oh, about that, I know nothing. You know, we could do with a stout and lusty friar. For one thing, to say mass for us here at the high feast. Robin, you can't go travelling there by yourself. Outside the forest, one man is safer than a band. But I won't let him know who I am till I found out what manner of man he is. Well, it's not often I get the chance of trying out a friar's sword arm against my own. <laughs> of St. Eldred's Shrine. His name is Tuck. Unusual name. What do you want of him? Ah, that I'll tell him when I find him. That I don't doubt. What will you say? What he needs to know. You can be sure of that. Now, uh, where can I find him? Well, you don't see him, do you? I only know what he looks like in a general sort of a way. Uh, he's a well-built fellow, uh, heavier than he should be, and somewhat past his prime. Who said that? <clears throat> no matter. The truth is, I've been on the road a long time, and I'm seeking a little rest and philosophical conversation. That one fellow cleric is as good as another. I fear I have no time for conversation. I am alone, and I have much to do. There's no one in your house, then? No one. Therefore, I suggest you continue on your way to Malden Abbey, an hour's walk. There you will find plenty of conversation. I'm too tired for another hour's walk. Too uh, thirsty and dry in the throat. It's such a hot and dusty day. Yeah, but perhaps a little refreshment. Yep. It's cooler and clearer from the stream. I mean, that's nothing but brook water you have there. What do you think it is? I'm only a simple friar. Stop! You rascal! Thief! Stop! It, it, not all of it. Ah. That is the finest tasting brook water in all England. You might have left me a few drops. Oh, I'll get you a whole new crock full. Fresh and cool. 
Well, at least now you will have the strength to be on your way. Oh, I, I, I couldn't cross the stream. I'd get my new gown all wet. Unless you were good enough to carry me across. Carry you? I most certainly would not. Well, then I'll have to stay here. Seems an interesting place. Oh, on second thoughts, I am reminded of my vow of humility to pattern myself more after the good St. Francis. On second thoughts, I doubt if your aging bones could carry my weight. My bones could carry two of you and not feel the load. Come on. <laughs> Hides broad steel sword. I'll show you what kind of a friar I am. Who are you anyway? Who are you expecting? Oh! 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 I might be. Are you Robin Hood? Yes, I am. No, stop! You're probably wondering where you are. That I know. I'm in a den of thieves and cutthroats. Oh, nonsense. Though I must admit we owe you an apology for that crack on the skull. Mildred thought you were one of Lord Germain's men come after her. Why should anybody be after her? Does she make a habit of cracking people over the head? <laughs> no. Mildred's a very gentle child, really. <coughs> She's the daughter of Brian the Herdsman, who works on Lord Germain's estate. Lord Germain? Well, he's a hard-hearted old rogue. What does he want with her? He wants to marry her off to Sir William of Marmersbury in exchange for a piece of Sir William's land. The wedding was supposed to have taken place yesterday. Instead, she ran away to me. You'd better not let his lordship find out about this. He won't like you interfering with his plans. What can I do? When she told me that she was in love with this worthy lad, Harold the Smith, how could I send her back? So it's true what they say about you. That you have the heart of a dove, the spirit of an eagle, in the face of a barn owl. You still haven't told me why you sent for me. I want you to smuggle Mildred and Harold out of the Shire, once beyond Lord Germain's reach, and she'll be as safe as any free citizen's wife. She's not my wife yet, Father. I'll undertake to put that in order in no time, if Robin Hood will undertake to lead you to safety. I'll do that for you, if you'll do something for me in return. Only yesterday, my men were asking if we couldn't find some holy father to say mass for us on which Sunday morn. In Sherwood Forest, after the Mass, we celebrate the feast. Um, roast pheasant, haunch of venison, sucking pig, washed down with brown October ale. But of course, if you're under a vow of fasting, we can always find some roots and berries for you. Uh, no, no, no special fare for me. I'll eat what the men eat. Heaven save 
neighbours. It must be Lord Germain. Did you tell anyone you were coming here? No. No one but my aunt. No one but your aunt, Mason. Eldred, forgive you your idiocy. Harold, up into the loft. Mildred, you run over to the shrine. Now, do as I say. Uh, Brother Robin, uh, you better stay here and tell your beads. Is there any more of that brook water around? In the cupboard. Come, Mildred. come to see St. Eldridge's Shrine. You have a wench of mine there. I'm Lord Germain, and this is Sir William of Malmesbury, to whom I've given her in marriage. Oh, yes? We've come for her. Has she agreed to this marriage? Agreed? I ordered it, and her father was told to have her ready. Mildred? Yes, father? Sir William of Malmesbury wishes to marry you. Do you accept him? No, father. The lady declines your proposal. Enough of this foolery. Drag her out of there and let's get back to the castle. I wonder if you'd mind dragging her out. Well, she's still yours, you know. And after all, I am marrying her tomorrow. Very well. Friar, stand aside. I shall do nothing of the sort. I want that girl. Mildred? Yes, Father? Do you wish to go with Lord Germain or stay where you are? Stay here. I'm sorry, my lord. The maid has sought sanctuary in a consecrated place. Nonsense. Violation of sanctuary is punishable by excommunication. Excommunication? How dare you threaten me? Once again, Friar, stand aside. Oh. Wait, Germain. Our very souls may be at stake. I never heard of the law of sanctuary applying to anything but a regular church or monastery. But we don't know for sure. Until I do, I won't take part in this. Very well. If you want to have everything tied up for you legally, I'll bring the Sheriff of Nottingham here. He'll soon put an end to this clerical obstruction. That's an excellent idea. I'll really abide by the Sheriff's decision. And you wait here and see that no one tries to make off with the wench. Whatever may be the outcome of this, I shall not forget your interference. <laughs> advise you, Father, to be a little more restrained. It's not a very sound idea to make an enemy of that particular Lord. Nor of my particular Lord, Sir William. How go the waiting plans? The bride is safe enough for the moment in the sanctuary of the shrine. But we have one too many grooms. Where's Lord Germain? He went to fetch the Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, then we're doomed. Oh, stop moaning. Go back and hide yourself again. I need quiet to think out this problem. I've had some dealings with the Sheriff of Nottingham. Surely you're not counting on him to have any respect for the law of sanctuary? No, I'm not. This problem must be solved before the Sheriff arrives. Which means we've got to think of a way of getting rid of Sir William. to challenge a knight's honor. It's such a sensitive point with them. Uh, no, it would be against my principles to allow you to go into combat without first hearing your confession. And that might take days. Or even weeks. Besides, murder is no way to start a young couple off on their honeymoon. 
they'd be held to blame for it and pursued the length and breadth of the country. Well, can you think of any other method of getting rid of him? Yes, I think I can. Although it's not altogether foolproof. Uh, cover up that unshaven head of yours. Sir William, we are about to break our fasts. Perhaps you'd care to join us. Uh, you can keep your eye on the shrine from this window. Thank you, fathers. It's, um, hmm, decent of you to share your repast with me. You'll be needing all your strength. She won't be easy to tame, that lass. No, but what a delightful task it will be. Hmm? <laughs> it might have been, if only circumstances had been different. How so? If only she hadn't been in love with someone else. You knew about that, of course. I was told something of the sort. That she had formed a girlish attachment to a tinker or a smith or someone of that class. It didn't disturb me particularly. It wasn't as though there was some doubt as to her virtue. Perhaps we're being pessimistic. Perhaps, after a year or so, she may have forgotten Harold. Harold? The Smith. Oh. It's possible. She might even retain some of that youthful bloom. But a year of weeping goes hard on a woman's face. Oh, no! I can't live without her! But this is Harold. Oh. Uh, Harold. If you take her from me, I'll die anyway. So I have nothing to lose by fighting you. Can I borrow this sword, good father? At least I shall die fighting for my love. The sword, my son, is his. Have you, um, have you used a sword before? No, but I'll fight you anyway. Can I have it? Don't lend it to him. It would be murder. Oh, but I must if he asks me for it. I can't refuse a sword to a weaponless man. But a swordsman like Sir William will split him in one stroke. Sir William, at least you'll let the lovers say a last farewell. Mildred, come here, quickly! Father, what's happened? It all worked out most unfortunately, I'm afraid, my dear. Harold will have to match swords with Sir William. <gasps> that is, uh, unless you say that you will be Sir William's bride of your own free will, in which case Harold won't have to fight at all. No, no! Mildred, my dear, you are deeply in love with Harold, aren't you? And that is why you feel you can't be happy as Sir William's wife. Believe me, my dear, it doesn't have to work out that way. No, no. You'll learn to close your eyes when your husband is caressing you, and in your mind you'll see the face of the man you love instead. Then think of all those daytime hours when Sir William is about his chivalrous duties, and you can see whoever you like. That is enough. Sir William, you can't slay this poor young man in cold blood. On the contrary, he must, though the less blood the better. Don't you see, if he slays the man she loves before her very eyes, that'll make her sulky. There's nothing worse than a sulky wife. On the other hand, if he doesn't kill him, she'll know he's soft-hearted. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? Yes. It's bad policy. Bad policy? Yes. An unwilling bride has got to be taught to fear her husband. Yes. Perhaps. But the sight of her love dying before her eyes will haunt her all her days. Not if he does it neatly with one stroke. I know what you're doing to me. You're trying to persuade me it would never work out. Oh, no, no. You're, well, I'm finally ready to admit that you're right. It could never work out. You mean you're, you're not going to kill him? You don't want your bride? No. But what about Lord Germain? He won't like it. You can be sure about that. He had his heart set on that old toll road. But my mind is made up. Perhaps you'd better marry them immediately before Lord Germain gets back, hmm? Yes! <coughs> Excuse me. Ready? Uh, well, we've just come... Oh, well, my love. Uh, don't mourn for me. I'll be better off dead. So will I. Give me the sword first. Father! 
Is it a sin to kill myself? We'll discuss it after you and Harold are married. Married? Who's coming? I can't see yet, but hurry it up. The ring, quickly. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And I do plight unto thee my troth. And I do plight unto thee my troth. You may go to Sheriff. Send to tell you I'll be ten days. First of all, I bought you are in civil dominaries. Hang up. But at each day, but at each day, bless you, my children, and farewell. Go straight on down the road till you come to the sign of the blue boar. I'll meet you in the stable behind the inn. Thank you. You and Friar Tuck. Now, just kiss the bride and start running. Um, finish the rest of that in the wood. Now, go on, run. We must give Harold and Mildred a chance to get away. Help me draw the sheriff off. Father. Uh, good day, my lord, Sheriff. What have you done with Sir William? Sir William, my lord, he went home. Who were those two who just went out of the back? The newlywed couple, your worship. Sir William changed his mind about the girl, my lord, so I married her to her lover. You what? It was Sir William's suggestion, my lord. In fact, you might say he ordered me to do it. But he couldn't have ordered you the girl belonged to me. Oh, excuse me, my lord, I'm just a simple friar. But when a knight with a great sword orders me to do something... Is this the one you said was so insolent? Yes. What has happened to Sir William? Uh, he cancelled his arrangement with you, my lord. I'll find out about that from him. In the meantime, I want my wench back. She's a runaway. She's married under unbreakable sacrament. You can't do anything about that, my lord. I can discipline her. Also, the fellow who's trying to take her away from me without my permission. I think an example should be made of this case. Don't worry, it will be. Farewell, brother. Thank you for the rest and refreshment. Which way to Malden Abbey? Uh, straight on across the stream and then take the left-hand path, brother. Pax Vobiscum. Et Vobiscum, Pax. The devil is that. Well, never mind about that. Will you please get your men after that girl? I couldn't tell you who he is for sure. He came here pretending to be another friar, but he acted more like an outlaw. If you want my private opinion, I think he's Robin Hood. You're quite right, my lord, but with that girl... The devil makes you say that. I beg your pardon? What makes you think he's Robin Hood? Oh, little things. Like that. It is Robin Hood. After him, then. No, wait. To horse. But what about my wench? Confound your wench. Yeah, he's taking my horse. Hey! <laughs> Oh, 